praise God. We we all should have a desire to walk deeper with the Lord. Yeah. Huh? Praise God. Let's see each one in the house of God this morning to worship Him. I take advantage of what God has given you today. This Amen. That God has given you. Praise God. Book of Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, and again reading at verse 1. It said, Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God, for in the month of Abib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction, for thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou comest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. There shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days, neither shall thou anything of the flesh which thou sacrifices the first day and even remain all night until the morning. Thou mayest not sacrifice a Passover within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, but at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in. There thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at evening at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. Thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt turn in, in, in the morning and go into thy tents. Six days shall thou eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. Seven weeks shall thy number unto thee, Began to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. Thou shalt keep the feast of the weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of free will offering of thy hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant, and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God had chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Praise God. Let's praise him. God, we love you. God, we praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. God, we thank you for each one that gathered together to hear your word today. Anoint you for thy glory. God will praise you for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. You may be seated. Now, I know that was kind of uh, an odd reading or an odd, uh, odd scripture uh, for, this, for this morning, but uh, how many recognize the fact today that uh, this is Pentecost Sunday? How many? How many? Uh, there, there are churches all over, different denominations are celebrating. This Sunday as Pentecost Sunday. Somebody said, well, what Pentecost Sunday is all about? I'm glad you asked. Praise God. Because what we read here was a, a celebration not only of the Passover, uh, and the Passover was when God miraculously delivered the children of, Egypt, uh, of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but he told them to take a lamb without spot and blemish it and to sacrifice that lamb and take the blood of that lamb and, and put it over their doorpost. And, and, and when the death angel would pass over Egypt that night and he saw that the blood was applied, he would, he would pass over them. Mm -hmm. So it's called Passover. The death angel would pass over them because the blood had been applied, the lamb had been slain properly and cooked properly and eaten properly. And the death angel would pass over them. And those that didn't have the blood applied, the, the, the death angel, the, the firstborn of that household would die. And so, so he's telling them now to observe uh, in the month of Abib, you, you observe this Passover. 
And then, then he told them, he said, he said so, so you don't forget how the Lord had delivered you out of the land of Egypt. Now, if you begin to study the Word of God, you realize that, that uh, in types and shadows of things to come, that Egypt was a type of sin, and they were in bondage to sin, and they had to be delivered from sin. So because they had to be delivered from sin, uh, we know that Jesus became our Passover lamb. Uh, that he was actually crucified during the time of Passover when many had gathered in Jerusalem uh, uh, to, to celebrate this, this Passover and to observe this Passover. As a matter of fact, the Lord's Supper, as we know it, was a, was a celebration of the Passover lamb. They were there to observe. If you go back to study the Scriptures, they were there to observe the Passover was the reason that they had the, the uh, uh, Last Supper in the room that they had it in, in the upper room there. And that was the reason. Uh, seven weeks of that day, 49 days, which would be on the 50th day then, they would celebrate the Feast of, of Pentecost. So the Feast of Pentecost was another Jewish celebration that, as a matter of fact, it means 50th. And it was 50th from the Passover. So, so they were celebrating the Passover, and 50 days of that, they, they celebrated Pentecost, which, which means 50th, and it was the 50th day from Passover. And that, that feast was also known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Passover was the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Or, uh, and, and, and then Pentecost was the Feast of Harvest, or the feast known as the Feast of Harvest, are known as the Feast of Weeks because it was seven weeks after the Passover that they that they began to observe uh, uh, the Passover and then, then to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost uh, uh, seven weeks after that or the Feast of Harvest as it is known. But he told them, he said, in that verse 12, he said, you shall remember. He said, well, let me back up. He said, thou shalt keep the Feast of Weeks which is, which is Feast of Pentecost uh, unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of free will offering of thine hand which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord thy God has blessed thee. Notice what it says in verse 11. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates, the stranger, the father, fatherless, and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there, there thou shalt remember that thou was abundant in Egypt. In other words, he said, you celebrate this, this, this feast of Pentecost. You celebrate Pentecost and remember how God brought you out of sin's bondage and set you free. Amen. Praise God. Say, praise God. So, so uh, for just a little while this morning, I want to preach to you, experience your Pentecost. Right. See, we know it when we, when we realize, uh, you know, as we recognize Pentecost today, we recognize it as an experience that was poured out in the Word of God, that was poured out in Acts, the second chapter, where, where we observe it as, as an outpouring of God's Spirit upon His people. It, but, it, but God chose for not only that lamb to be sacrificed while they were celebrating the Passover when Jesus became our, our, our sacrificial lamb, but He also chose in the Feast of Harvest to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. And it's known as this experience, this outpouring of the Holy Ghost is what we call the Pentecost, our Pentecostal experience. So, so I'm admonishing you today to begin to observe or to begin to celebrate your Pentecost. Your Pentecost. On this Pentecost, we all celebrate it. We all celebrate it because we know God uh, sacrificed Himself in the form of Jesus Christ, that Lamb for sacrifice to take away yeah. the sins of the world. Yeah. And we know that He told them, He began to admonish them, and began to teach them mm -hmm. about an outpouring of His Spirit. We can go into uh, Matthew, 
the third chapter and the eleventh verse, as, as they began to teach, even John the Baptist began to teach, and he began to tell them in John 3 and 11, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He said, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So even early on there, even in, in, in John the Baptist's ministry, he began to try to teach them of this outpouring that was about to take place. This outpouring that was to come on the believer's uh, you know, life in the form of the Holy Ghost and fire. Praise God. So if you go to the book of book of John and also begin to read in the book of John, the third chapter, and verse five, and, and, and a lot of these are uh, from here. See, and sometimes you know uh, those, those of you that heard have heard me teach this and heard these scriptures over and over again, and was raised in this. See, 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 you you understand you you. But we fail to remember, not, not everybody grew up in this. Not everybody understands why we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, why we're having a Pentecost Sunday, and why we've got Pentecostal on our church sign out from. Because it's simply an experience God taught us about uh, through His Word, and through His outpouring of His Spirit. You know, what, you know what's the sad thing about it? Some people are afraid of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They really are. Because they, you want to tell you why? They don't understand it. Right. They don't understand it. Why God chose that day, this feast of harvest, to pour out His Spirit. Well, now we look at it as a harvest of souls. As a harvest of souls. But John, John 3. 5 and 8, Jesus answered, in, uh, or, or 3 and 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I said unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. <coughs> we, knew, we, know, we know when we was born of the natural, we, we were born of the flesh. And that which is born of Spirit is Spirit. And he said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now why did he mention wind in there? Why did he mention wind in there? If you go back, the wind there, this wind represents the breath of God. Huh? It represents the Spirit of God. If you go back uh, 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 to the uh, book of Ezekiel to the dry bones, he said, prophesy to the wind. And tell it to it blow breath in, 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 into, into this, these dry bones. So, so we realize that, that he said that is born of Spirit. His Spirit, he said, he talks about the wind. Well, we know we know what it says in Acts second chapter. That suddenly there came a sound of from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. But look, look what it says in, in in the fourth chapter of the book of John in the tenth verse. Jesus answered and said unto thee, If thou knewest the gift of God. Bible speaks in, in Acts 2 and 38 as this outpouring or this infilling of the Spirit as a gift. He told the woman at the well, he, Jesus answered him and he said, said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto her, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? And thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. 
But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Praise God. Could I tell you this morning that that well of living water that he's talking about here to the woman at the well is the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, how do you know that? I'm glad you asked. Praise God. Go to John's Gospel, the 7th chapter. Verse 37. In the last day, the great day of the feast. What feast? Huh? They were, they were, they, hey, go, go to Jewish East. They were all the time celebrating something. They had these feasts and, and things that were said. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, If any man thirst, what do you tell the woman at the well? If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. But this spake he of the Spirit. That, that they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. The Bible said he spake of this living water as the Spirit or as the Holy Ghost. Telling them, teaching them about the Spirit that was to come. John the Baptist prophesied of it or told of it. Jesus came on the scene and began to try to teach them about this outpouring that was to take place. See, look at John, the book of John 14. John 14, and I, I'm, I'm going to read a good... Uh, a good portion of that, that scripture because I want us to understand something, something. That, that, there is something in, in, in John 14 if we're not careful we miss. We, we, we quote a lot of times the first part of it. There's something there that, that we, we simply overlook although it's there. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there, you may be also. I want to be with Jesus. Right. Whether I go, and whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Now, now listen. He, 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 as I read down further, Jesus begins to reveal Himself and who He is to His disciples. Amen. And the two things that He begins to reveal Himself to them about is that not only is He that Lamb for sacrifice, not only is He the Son of God, but that He is God. Amen. And not only that He is God, is that He's also the Spirit of God, or the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Bible says, if you read further, boy, you, you'll find that these, the Bible says these three are one. These three are one. So, so he, he begins to reveal Himself. He said, Jesus said unto them, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. See, see what we don't understand is that there's three workings of the Spirit of God. It's the Father in creation, the Son in redemption, the Holy Ghost in regeneration, and are the Holy Ghost in the church. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. No other way. No other way. No other way. <laughs> I, I was, I, I was uh, very proud, and I was watching a news interview because uh, somebody had come against uh, Dr. Robert Jeffers because he believed that Jesus was the only way. And they were interviewing him about that and he didn't back down a bit. He didn't back down a bit. He said, it, that is the only way. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, that's what the Bible says and that's what I believe. Amen. 
He said, I am the way, truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Notice this. If ye had known me, you should have known my Father also. Notice what he said in front. From henceforth you know him and what? Have seen him. Right. So he began to try to reveal to himself or to his disciples who he was. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Praise God. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it suffices us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Mm -hmm. How can you say that, Philip, when you've been with, with me this long? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. He said, Philip, if you don't believe me for anything else, believe me because of the works that I'm doing. Right. Amen. Believe who I am because of the works that I'm doing. Praise God. <coughs> he said, Very, very, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So I said, well, they, they, they must be too because he's going to the Father. No, he came out of the Father. He's going back to where right. he came out of. Yeah. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You, you know, you, you know why so many people have a hard time serving God and living with God like they ought to? Because they don't believe who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. But, but notice what he said. Somebody said, Oh, you don't believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? I believe in all I believe in all of it. I believe in all of it. I believe in the Father. I, be, I believe I got a heavenly Father. Right? Amen. And I believe he sent his son to die for me. <coughs> Because the son, the sonship was that flesh that Jesus was born into, that God chose. The sonship was the flesh that God chose to dwell in. Hmm? And I believe in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Because, let, let, let me ask you something. Let me, let, me, let me ask you something. We think of a ghost. When you think of a ghost in the natural, what do you think of? The spirit of somebody that died. Amen. Yes, you died for me. Amen. And guess what spirit is in that? But no, notice, he said, he said, I'll pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but notice what he said. He said, but you know him. For he dwelleth with you. Who was with, who was with the disciples at that time? Jesus was. <clears throat> he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Notice what he said. He said, he said, he said, I'm going to send you another comfort. He may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Then, then notice verse 18, he began to reveal him, himself again to his disciples. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Amen. Well, he just got through saying he'll send the Holy Ghost to us. <coughs> no, he was coming back in the form of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He had a, he, God had another work to do. God, God had to work as a father. God had to work as a son. Now God's got to work as the Holy Ghost in the church. 
He said, Yet a little while the world sees me no more, but ye shall see me, because I live, you shall live also. And, and at that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And he that has my commandments keepeth them, and he that is he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved to my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, and not his character, another Judas. Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us? How wilt thou that thou manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. My Father will love him and will come to him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. He said, whatsoever I have said unto you, he'll bring it into your remembrance. Praise God. But look at this. He was trying to teach him. He was trying to teach him. Look at, look at this. Luke 9, 9, uh, 20th chapter, verse 19. This was after Jesus had been crucified and he appeared back to his disciples. The same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the door was shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands, his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. huh. that, that, that sounds like, well, that sounds like almost a commandment. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds like a commandment. When he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Look at, but I tell you, the disciples wasn't in the dark because he told them, he said, he opened their understanding. If you go back to Luke's Gospel, the 24th chapter, Luke 24, verse 45, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And he said, You're witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, the world, the world, don't, 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 the world don't like to hear anybody preach repentance. Mm. I'm afraid some church people don't like to hear the preacher preach repentance. But he said, you preach this beginning in Jerusalem. So if you haven't repented of your sins, I'm preaching to you repenting of your sins. Right. Praise God. Look at, look at Acts, the second chapter. Verses 1 through 8. Let me just, let me, let me just go ahead and drop down to verse 4 and it'll save some time. Be assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, Wait for the promise of the Father. Look, look here. Look here, look here again. 
Him to be. That they wait for the promise of the Father which he which saith he, you've heard of me. Let's drop back. Well, let's drop back on. Uh, go back to, to. I got one through eight, but we're, we're going to get that in. But I want to drop back. I want to drop back. And I didn't. I, I didn't have it from that, but I want to read this uh, in Acts one and four. And then we'll then we'll go to this other Acts one and four. And being assembled together, I want you to, I want you to notice what it says. Being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith thee, he, you've heard of me. You've heard of me. That's Jesus telling them, you've heard of me. You, you've heard about this Holy Ghost. This promise of the Father. For John truly baptized with the water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, now we can go to Acts the second chapter in verse one. And when the day of Pentecost, now what what were we talking about all ago? It is this, this celebration of the feast of Pentecost. They were they were celebrating. It was a time of harvest, and they were not only were they celebrating their harvest, but he said he said hey, y'all go rejoice in this day. You go, if you go back in the book of Deuteronomy, read, he said, you rejoice in this day. You're celebrating your harvest, you rejoice in the day. And remember how you were a bondman in Egypt, but God brought you out. So they, they, were, they were in the upper room 50 days after the crucifixion of Jesus where they were celebrating the Passover. And now they were in the upper room and, and, and the Feast of Pentecost was about to get into full swing. Huh? Because the Bible said, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, mm -hmm. they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as does that wind again, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. Praise God. Praise God. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. See, this is why, as we read on now, this is why you find so many different people in the city of Jerusalem at this time. They came in to, to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And that's why it says, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven, and I'm running out of time fast. <laughs> when this was noised the brawl, the multitude came together and were found, confounded because that every man heard them speak his own language, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? How here we every man in his own tongue wherein we were born and then it lists all the different uh, uh, ones that were there the di you know different nationalities that were there verse 12 and they were all amazed and were in doubt too many people are still in doubt today they were in doubt saying one to another what meaneth this uh, others mocking saying you know what people pe People get mad, uh, uh, you know, at you about preaching the Holy Ghost, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, and who Jesus is when you when, when all you're doing is reading them what the Scripture says. Right. Well, they, so so if you get mad about it, you get mad at the Scripture. And they were all amazed and were down, saying one to another, "What mean is this?" Others mocking and said, "These men are full of new wine." See, some people don't mind getting full of new wine and acting crazy. <laughs> hmm. And then wake up with a hangover the next morning and wonder why in the world have I done that. I, I, I've, had, I've had to come on the job and, and they've been partying and drinking all night and come on the job and I'll never do that again. <laughs> Not till the next time anyway. <laughs> and then they want to make up fun of you for having a Holy Ghost party. Ha yeah. ha, the hangover's a lot better. Yeah. 
Others mocked and said, These men are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all that dwell in Jerusalem, be known unto you and hearken unto me that my words, these are not drunken as you suppose. This ain't why they're drunk. Sin is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which is spoken of by the prophet Joel. It's spoken of by the prophet Joel. It was prophesied of. It's, it's still real today. It's still true today. Right. It's still happening today. It's still pouring out the spirit today. Whether it's the day of one post or another celebration. I come to pass in the last day, said God, I pour out my spirit upon my whole flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and my handmaids I'll pour out my uh, out of, in those days of my spirit, they shall prophesy. I'll show one who's in the heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, vapor, and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm glad right. I know his name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that name is Jesus. Praise God. One name whereby we must be saved. Amen. Now call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. How many, how many, how many and I have, of course, I've been in this a long time. How many, how many have seen people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost calling on the name of Jesus? Amen. You know why? The Holy Ghost knows its name. Oh, Lord. It's, it's better if you're a little late getting to the Mexican restaurant. All the others are cleared out. <laughs> Verse 32, this Jesus has God raised up, whereof you are all your witnesses, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. For David is not ascended unto the heavens, but he saith said himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, oh, by, by the way, both Lord and, anybody want to know what, what the, the, the uh, uh, translation of the word Lord is from the Greek in the New Testament? It's Jehovah. It's Jehovah. What do you mean? Look it up. Both Jehovah and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some people say the only... And this is what gets me. Some people say, well, only the twelve disciples got it. There were 120 in the room. Well, it stopped after that. I, I, I ain't found it in my Bible yet. Huh? Because he said, For the promise is unto you, to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself. I can't do it for you. If I, if, if I could do it for you, every one of you would have it. Right. <laughs> Amen. Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that he, he, they that gladly received his word were baptized. You know why some people don't get it? They don't gladly receive his word. Amen. They that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. Praise God. Praise God. Let me, let me end with this. Titus three. Verse 5 and 6. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. Thank God for His mercy. Amen. Amen. But according to His mercy He saved us 
by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. There you go. Which he shed us, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That word, that word washing means baptism. That word regeneration. Means restoration. Renewing means to re renovate or reform. So, the washing of regeneration, you can look at it like this it's the baptism of restoration Amen. through the Holy Ghost. Right. Through the reformation of the Holy Ghost. When He renovates our life and cleans us up Thank and you. make us where we have the power to live right and serve Him and do right and worship Him like we ought to. Praise God. So I encourage you, if you've never experienced your Pentecost, now would be a good day to do it. I can't do it for you. It's something you've got to do for yourself. It's something you've got to receive for yourself. It's something you've got to desire. It's something you've got to want for the life itself. If you already experienced it, renew your Pentecost. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Celebrate Pentecost Sunday by experiencing what Pentecost is all about. It's not, it's not just a name on a church somewhere. It's an experience that will change your life forever. Come on, come on, let's celebrate again.